Hey guys, welcome back to this channel. If you're new here, my name is Aaron. I'm a junior doctor working in London and on the side I put out some medical education content onto YouTube, Instagram and Twitter, which I found useful when I was studying, so hopefully it's of some use to you guys. So in my last video, I covered the four most common cardiology OSCE cases, aortic stenosis, mitral regurge, valve replacement and coronary artery bypass graft. So earlier this week, you guys voted on my Instagram poll for me to do the respiratory OSCE cases as separate single videos. So that's what we're gonna try this time. By the way, if you don't follow me on Insta, please go follow me, thanks. So in this video, we're gonna be focusing on pulmonary fibrosis, one of the really common OSCE cases that could come up in your respiratory station. And I've also done videos on bronchiectasis, lobectomy, pneumonectomy, and COPD. So please go check them out. Today, we'll talk about the examination findings that you see in pulmonary fibrosis, how to present your findings clearly, and how to tackle your typical viva questions. And this is all part of the retrospective approach for revising for OSCEs, which I've already talked about. So let's jump straight into this case. So these are the positive findings from this case. Peripherally, this patient has clubbing of the nails. And when we're focusing on the chest, on palpation, there's reduced chest expansion bilaterally. And on auscultation, we can hear fine end inspiratory crackles in the lower zones that do not clear on coughing. So it's the clubbing in combination with the fine end inspiratory crackles that are the classic signs for pulmonary fibrosis. Some of you will be aware that bronchiectasis and other of the common respiratory OSCE cases presents very similarly with clubbing, but this time with coarse crackles on auscultation. And I'll be honest, I was never able to confidently differentiate between fine and coarse crackles on auscultation. So I'll show you a few tips later on in the video as to clues that point towards pulmonary fibrosis and some clues that point more towards bronchiectasis. Okay, so back to this case, almost always after we've finished our examination, the first question we'll get asked is to present our findings. And I always like to use the same structure. We start off with an introductory sentence where we try to commit to a diagnosis if we have an idea. We then list out our positive findings. We then go over our relevant negative findings. And finally, we finish off with a summary. So something like this, I performed a respiratory examination on this patient who has signs suggestive of pulmonary fibrosis. My main positive findings are digital clubbing, and on the chest there was decreased chest expansion bilaterally, and on auscultation I could hear fine end inspiratory crackles in the lower zones that did not clear on coughing. My relevant negative findings are reassuringly this patient is not currently requiring oxygen, there was no signs of a CO2 retention flap, and there were no signs of decompensation such as core pulmonale. So this points towards pulmonary fibrosis. So that's your presentation, which I'm sure would get you a really, really good score. But just to really impress your examiners, you can add on a bit more. The absence of any signs of rheumatoid arthritis, such as rheumatoid nodules, any signs of dermatomyositis, such as proximal myopathy, plus taking into account the patient's age, make the most likely diagnosis idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. That extra bit just makes you look like you've managed to think about the possible causes for pulmonary fibrosis and you've looked out for clues to help narrow down your differential. Okay, so a common follow-up question to this would be, what are the causes of pulmonary fibrosis? And it's completely fine to just list out a few causes, but just to try and look even slicker, it's really nice to structure your answer by classifying your causes. A useful mnemonic for this is BEAST, for causes of pulmonary fibrosis that affect the upper lobes, and RAID, for causes of pulmonary fibrosis that affect the lower lobes. I can't remember where I got that from, but I'll link it in the description of this video. So you could say something like this in your OSCE. There are numerous causes of pulmonary fibrosis, which can be classified based on which part of the lung is most affected. Causes of upper lobe pulmonary fibrosis could include silicosis, tuberculosis, and ankylosing spondylitis. And causes of lower lobe pulmonary fibrosis could include rheumatoid arthritis, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, and drug-induced causes such as methotrexate. So now onto your differential diagnosis. You'd want to start with what you think is your most likely differential and then move down your list. So in this case, my top differential would be pulmonary fibrosis and more specifically idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. But I'd also like to consider other possible causes of pulmonary fibrosis such as rheumatoid arthritis or drug-induced causes such as methotrexate. My next differential would be bronchiectasis, although this would more likely present with coarse crackles that clear on coughing. On a more practical note, it can be really difficult to differentiate between fine and coarse crackles on auscultation. So two clues that I look for from the end of the bed to help me is pulmonary fibrosis patients tend to be a bit more cachectic and the cough. So pulmonary fibrosis patients have a very dry cough. Bronchiectasis patients tend to have a very wet, productive cough. 
So something I always like to do at the start of the respiratory examination is ask my patient to have take a big cough. These are definitely not definitive signs of one diagnosis over the other, but these are just some clues that help me. If you guys have any others, then please leave it in the comments below. So now on to how you would investigate this patient. And once again, try to classify. So I like to classify into bedside tests, blood tests, imaging, and special tests. So in this case, I'd like to investigate this patient by starting with some bedside tests. So for example, a peak flow, which I'd expect to be reduced in this case, and sputum MCNS to look for any signs of a superimposed infection. I'd also like to do some blood tests, such as a full blood count to look for any signs of anemia, which would exacerbate any underlying shortness of breath an ABG where I'd expect type one respiratory failure and specific blood markers to help point towards a cause of the pulmonary fibrosis. So for example, I'd look for rheumatoid factor and anti-CCP in rheumatoid arthritis and raised serum ACE and raised calcium for signs of sarcoidosis. I'd want to then move on to imaging. So I'd like to start with this chest X-ray and looking specifically for signs of reticulonodular shadowing. And then my diagnostic test would be a CT chest where I'd look for signs of honeycombing and also look for the location of the fibrosis. And then I like to finish with some special tests. So for example, spirometry, where I would expect a restrictive pattern for this patient. And then bronchial alveolar lavage, where a high lymph site count would be suggestive of a better prognosis. And finally, they could ask you about management of pulmonary fibrosis. And once again, try and classify your answer. So I'd start with conservative management that would involve an MDT approach involving the GP, the respiratory team, as well as the physios to help with chest physio. I'd also recommend smoking cessation if the patient is still a smoker. Medical therapies are sometimes used for pulmonary fibrosis. Perfenidone is approved in the UK and US to treat idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis with specific criteria. And steroids are used to help treat pulmonary fibrosis related to connective tissue disease. And surgical treatments include lung transplants, but these are usually kept to a last resort for very young patients with severe disease. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video. I've tried something different this time in doing one case fully rather than trying to cram loads of cases into one single video. I hope this worked. Let me know what you think in the comments. But for now, thanks for watching. Have a good night and I'll see you in the next video.